Hello and good day to you. Welcome back again to our channel. Um, today we are actually we've decided to have a discussion about one of the topics that we have shared with you a um, few weeks ago, entitled righteous anger. The reason why we have decided to um, revisit this topic topic again is for us to have a discussion about it because yeah. we feel like there is a depth to it that hasn't been shared in the previous um, video. And our hope is that this discussion today would um, elaborate on it more mm -hmm. and make us realize and see the need for us to understand this topic, especially in, in today's um, context. So before we dive in, I think we should just pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name for um, being here today. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for the preparation and for the infill, oh God. Mm -hmm. We just pray, Father, Lord, that your presence will come and take over today mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. You will speak through us, Father Lord, and your heart will be seen in this message today in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. May the people that listen to this message today, Father Lord, um, walk away, Father Lord, with it um, embedded and rooted in their hearts, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Holy Spirit, you would water, Father, Father, this planting, O oh God, and that you will cause it to grow, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you and we glorify your name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, um, as you know, this is going to be a discussion. So, um, we are going to try to um, address it in so many different, so many different um, angles. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to lose. Um, we don't want it to be too, too loose and too expanded. So, yeah, we'll just pray that the Holy Spirit will just really, really take control and help us. So, our mode of discussion today will be in three folds. So, we are going to discuss about what righteous anger is. Yeah. Um, and place it in scripture yeah. and we are going to um uh observe the life of christ yeah. whether or not he exercised righteous anger mm. and how his actions can be justified in scripture yeah. and then um at the end we are going to try and understand how we ourselves can maintain righteous anger yeah. um one of our key focus in this discussion as well is how to differentiate between righteous anger and unrighteous anger that's right um and and try to uh, kind of like address this issue that we have noticed of people using scripture to justify unrighteous unrighteous anger, anger. Mm -hmm. this message is going to be two folds if we can put everything um in by in 30 minutes then so be it but if we can't and we're gonna make it two folds. So um so yeah, we're gonna make it we'll make it two folds. Let's see just let's see how it goes. Like I said, it is a discussion, mm. so it has the potential of um of 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 getting bigger than than what we initially initially planned. Yeah. So we're gonna begin first of all by defining what righteous anger is. What is righteous anger? Have you ever heard the term righteous anger before? And if so, do you know what it actually means? So, we have written here that righteous anger is getting angry at the things that are not of God. Yeah. It is an anger that is grieved by sin, death, and any form of evil. Mm. It is an anger that is aroused against sin, but does not lead us to sin. That is what righteous anger is. Um, we're going to use scripture, obviously, to, um, to verify this definition. But before we delve in any deeper, I just wondered if there's anything you wanted to say um, in relation to that definition. Yeah, uh, the thing is, number one thing we have to understand is before this message, you know, before this message came, before God gave us this topic and this message, is because we was one a victim to this mm -hmm. kind of situation yeah. where we get angry to things that we shouldn't get angry for. Mm -hmm. So, but as time goes on in our relationship with God and it begins to unfold and undo so many things in us, changes, you know, like transformation, transforming us gradually. And we begin to spot all these things and notice that uh, all these things are uh, issue. So, there's difference between righteous anger and unrighteous anger, mm -hmm. which is why we're here today. Um, like according to that definition, I think that definition is where spot on. Mm -hmm. It's spot on because there is righteous anger, and the righteous anger is what God has for us. 
as a human being. Yeah. And also, in addition to that as well, um, one of the reasons why we felt the impression in our heart to, um, to talk about this subject is because God is, make, God is making us understand the need for us to exercise righteous anger right now in this present moment more than ever before. Um, the need for us to um, reserve our energy for um, the focus on the things that we should be angry about um, as opposed to the things that we shouldn't be angry yeah. about. So really and truly, we should not be so angry against um, people, our brothers and sisters in Christ or our literal brothers and sisters and family. Um, that's too much energy being angry at them when in fact there are things, there are wicked things that are happening right now mm. in the world. The wicked things are happening right now around us that we should be getting angry about. And those are the things that we should focus our energy on yeah. and exercise righteous anger according to scripture. Yeah. So our hope today at the end of this discussion mm. is that um, you would see reasons why you need to exercise righteous anger and you'll find um, areas in your life where um, you, you're actually exercising unrighteous anger and that you ask the spirit of God to help you to differentiate the two and yeah. to act on the things that are necessary. Yeah. So um, in extension to the definition of righteous anger, mm. which is the scripture that we wanted to raise, we're going to look at the book of Numbers, mm. Numbers 32, verse 13. Mm. It says, so the Lord's anger was aroused against Israel. And he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years unto all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was gone. Mm. This is an example of God's anger. Yeah. This is how God gets angry. Yeah. I've written here that even in, the, even in punishment, God displays his, di displays his anger righteously. <laughs> in his righteous anger, God made the Israelites wander in the wilderness for 40 years because he had cho because they had chosen to follow other gods and not listen to his voice why because he was patient mm. we have to understand that this these israelites being in in the wilderness for 40 years it was as a result of god's patience yeah. god was patient mm. not them yeah. and so you find that um you know when we read that scripture a lot of the times our remarks would be that, oh my God, 40 years in the wilderness. Mm. Wow, how could, how, why didn't they just listen? Or, oh, how did they endure all that, all those years? Mm. And the focus is not really on God. The focus is on them and um, how they spent all those years suffering or going round and round and round. That must have been so exhausting. That must have been so um, difficult. Yeah. But no, we don't, we don't tend to focus on God. Mm. And how God Himself is being patient, yeah. because He God had to wait for forty years for these people's mind to change. To change. And this is this is God exercising righteous mm. anger. Mm. He could have He could have let His emotions spilled um, spilled out of control and just wipe all of them out, but mm. He didn't. In His righteous anger, He decided to wait patiently. Mm. I've written there the second the book of Second Peter's mm. three verse nine. Yeah, and that that just remind like what you're just saying is totally true. Because that is the same thing that we do today. Mm. This is what we do today that we think when we pray, we think God doesn't answer our prayer. Mm. But but we don't know why mm. he doesn't we, we think he doesn't is not answering our prayer, but mm. he is actually waiting patiently so mm. that our heart can transform yeah. and change to what you know what he wants to bless us with so that we can make use of it. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't want us to be so he's, he's actually being patient mm. and his patient is getting angry that we're taking long to yeah. understand yeah. what we need so, yeah. that, you know, to bring him into our life, to make him, to help us to change things. So, I, I think yeah. the book of Second Peter 3, 9 puts it in such a wonderful way that God is not slow in keeping his promises like the way us human beings mm. assume slowness. Yeah. But rather he's being patient with us, not wanting any of us to um to perish, perish. but wanting all of us to come to repentance. Mm. So when you find yourself in a situation where you feel like I have been patient on the Lord for so long and you know when you're you feeling like you're feeling frustrated, just remember that no, you're not the one that's doing the waiting. As a matter of fact, he's the one that's doing the waiting. There is something in your life that you haven't recognized. Perhaps it's a work that he's doing in the background that you don't know. Maybe he's waiting for your heart to change about a certain thing. Your heart hasn't really changed and um, accommodate his will the way that he's supposed to accommodate his mm. will. Maybe he's waiting for your mind to, for you to repent and change the way you think and you mm. haven't done that. 
So God is actually the one being patient. Yeah. He's the one being frustrated. Mm. He's the one that is waiting for you to, to actually choose him mm. and not the other way around. Yeah. Um, so this is what we're talking about when it comes to, when we're talking about righteous anger, he's grieved. The heart of the Lord is grieved when we do not fall in line with his will for us because he knows that his will for us is the best thing. Yeah. He, he's not going to, he's not going to allow you to do what you, you know, he's not going to leave you to do what you want to do. I yeah. mean, he can do what you want to do, but it is not according to his will. So mm. he's just going to keep waiting for you to return back into his will. Yeah. So his heart is grieved by sin. His heart is grieved by, um, you not knowing him and not acknowledging him and yeah. his will for you. Mm. His heart is grieved when your mind is not repenting and he's grieved. And these are the things that we would define as righteous anger, yeah. anger that grieves sin, anger that grieves, um, the, the the inability to acknowledge God in our lives. Yeah. If I can say so. Yeah. And another thing I will add to that as well is the reason why we are not patient. Mm -hmm. We think the reason why we are not um allowing transformation in our heart or that changing of your heart is because we've put a timeline mm. to the things that we need. Mm. You know, that we, we, or maybe what we want, but we believe that is what we need, or what we need, but we have not changed our heart towards that thing. Mm. And God is waiting patiently before He can give us that thing mm. because he, he, he has His own moment, His own destination time mm. that, you know, that is destined for everyone. Mm. So, but because patiently, not waiting patiently, is one of the reasons why we think God probably hasn't answered us. Mm -hmm. But we don't realize that, you know, I, I'm sure the Israelite will be thinking, what's wrong with this God? Where yeah. is he? Why is he doing all this? Why did he bring us here mm -hmm. to suffer? And it's not even that. It's because they're, they're not changing their heart. And like you said, it, it, it takes God to be that patient for them to go around in a circle mm. for that long mm. and they couldn't see that yeah and i think that yeah we need to recognize that for us not to put a timeline yeah into what god is ready to give to us yeah i mean the yeah. subject of timeline i think is a big subject that yeah can yeah be, can <laughs> even be covered yeah. today but yes i is think it? it's, it's i a, just thought i'll bring that yeah, into the that. world is the world we yeah. live in mm. um unfortunately and we forget that god created time and he's outside of time yeah and we are limited by time and so we think god also is limited by time yeah he isn't yeah um so yeah in summary we we I hope we have seen that god has therefore displayed the character the characteristics of righteous anger mm. you know and you can see this you can see this throughout scripture mm. there is examples that we can um lift up so for us to see that god's anger is a righteous anger mm. And then ultimately, we want to dis differentiate that from human anger, which yeah. is unrighteous anger. Yes. Naturally, our human response is an unrighteous one. Mm. So, for instance, now in the book of Psalms 145, verse 8, mm. it says, The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, yeah. and abounding in steadfast love. Mm. That is our God. Wow. He's slow to anger, and he's merciful, and... He's abounding in steadfast love. Human anger, on the other hand, mm. let's look at the book of James 1.20. Yeah. It says, For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of, of God. God. The human anger, on the contrary, is not good because it does not produce the, the righteousness, righteousness of, of God. God. Yeah. You know, so we can see that, that God's anger is righteous and our, our natural instinct mm. is, is an unrighteous yeah. one. Yeah. This is why we need the help of God. This is why we need the help of the Holy Spirit. This is why mm. these things that we're talking about today, these things that we're teaching about today, we're not telling you to go and apply your willpower yeah. and to exercise your own strength mm. and um, your own control. No, invite the Holy Spirit in. Mm. Because really what he's doing is he's exchanging something. Yeah. You, you, you yeah. know, the thing is, this is so, this verse so powerful. We should, Psalm 145 verse 8 mm. and that James uh, 1 verse 20 telling us about the human part we, uh, a part of us that how, how our anger does not you know prove that we are righteous mm. you know mm -mm. it doesn't show that mm. and if we look at the fact that when you have the Holy Spirit in you and he's transformed you mm. if we look at the case of Stephen mm. 
is because he had the Holy Spirit inside of him. When he was being stoned to death, mm. he, he had the righteous anger. And he said, Lord, forgive them. Do not remember this mm. against them mm. uh, at the day of judgment. Mm. You know, he said, do not remember this. That means he had that righteous anger for him to say, forgive them for they don't know. Mm. Mm. Is a righteous anger. Mm, of course, yes, because um, it is, it's crazy to think at that point you're being stoned. Yeah. And your natural your natural response should be, God, destroy them. Yeah. Or God, God send, send fire the, from heaven. The, the host of heaven so to just be, to destroy that is a, that these is people. A, that is a human response. Yeah. That is a human response. But Stephen responded like Christ responded. Yes, because he identified there is a difference. Mm. He, he, he knows, he identified that this is not just ordinary people standing. Mm. There is something inside of them. Mm. So that's why he has been transformed. Mm. There is a transformation here. Mm. So he understood, mm. but they don't understand. Yeah. So he had to pray for them, even in the time of his, the pain that he was going through. Mm. Even to the point of his death, he was still praying. That's amazing. You I know. mean, you, know, you think about the slightest thing that somebody does to offend you. Mm. And naturally, you just um, want to... There's this needs to kind of like defend yourself. Mm. Or there's this needs to kind of like um, make them understand why what they've done is wrong. Mm. For me personally, anyway, there's this need to kind of like um, make sure that you understand the violation of where you've crossed the line and all these sort of things. You know, that's... And for somebody to be angry and none of that is their their the focus, mm. like that's not their focus. For you to mm. like ignore all of that and just say Lord forgive them, that it takes another, yeah, friend. Yeah, it takes another. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Takes another level and because we we are not innocent. Of course, we are yeah. not innocent. We get into this human part of us that mm. just instantly want to react to something yes. to pain yeah. to. To, to words that someone spoke about you, mm. to things. So what God is saying is that at this point of time, we need to change our heart. Mm. We need to transform our heart. Be like Stephen. Be like those who are crying, praying for people in mm. the time of... Because this time that we are, there are many entities that are looking for bodies to go on. Mm. And they're, they're not just looking for ordinary body to just sit in. Mm. They're looking for body to sit in, to go in and use that body. Mm, 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 mm. Use that body to cause yeah. other people to sin. Yeah. I don't know if you understand what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. So so many demons mm. are walking around looking yeah. for empty bodies yeah. to dwell in mm. and go around and cause people to fall. Mm. Whether by anger, whether by any form of sin. Anything. So, so they just, those demons are just ready to use anybody. Mm. So this is the time that we don't get angry to those people. We pray for them. Yeah. If we truly, we want people to enter the kingdom of God, yeah. like what Stephen did. Yeah. And yeah. the an important thing, I feel like an important thing to establish here is we're not saying that you shouldn't be angry. Mm. Um, anger is an emotion that God placed in us for yeah. a reason. Yeah. Because God himself gets angry. Yes. Anger is, I think the time I did a video where I talked about anger, is actually you recognizing that something is not right here. Yeah. yeah. Something has gone wrong. Mm. You know, you just, you, that's what it's supposed to do. So mm. it's an emotion that's supposed to identify where and there is an issue. Yes. And so there's nothing wrong with being angry, mm. but in your anger, identify the issue and deal with it accordingly. Yeah. And in dealing with it accordingly, we're saying that be careful that you do not act unrighteously. Yes. You do not act, um, 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 you know, in a way that leads you to sin. Yes. Yeah. I think to conclude, to mm. conclude in the definition, mm. we are saying that righteous anger grieves sin. sin. And an unrighteous anger leads us to sin. sin yeah. Anger is not the issue. Mm. But are you grieving sin or are you being led to yes, sin yeah. because of anger? Mm. And so those are the things that we're going to explore a bit more deeper. Yeah. Um, yes. So moving on. Um, we are now going to talk about, obviously we mentioned God's, um, God's anger as being righteous. Yeah. We are going to dwell into that deeper mm. by, by talking about um, the examples of Jesus Christ in areas where he has exercised um, righteous anger. Mm. Um, I've written here that there are many examples of Jesus getting angry in scripture. Yeah. For example, when he got angry at Peter for contending with him about his death. Mm. This is in the book of Matthew 16, 23. The scripture says, 
But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me for you are not settling for you're not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. If we refer this back to the definition, mm. we would see that Jesus Christ is speaking according to scripture. Yeah. Because um, he recognized that Peter was not speaking according to God, mm. God's type of anger, like we've established. Uh, but he's speaking according to the human type yeah. of anger, which is an anger that is, according to James, mm. it is an unrighteous anger. It's yeah. an anger that just responds out of the flesh. I just like that because what I picked there from that Bible verse, Matthew 16, 23, mm -hmm. is the fact that Jesus, straight away, he knew what his mission, mission was. Mm. He knew his own mission. He knew what he's yet to do. Mm. Then when someone spoke against it, mm. which is unrighteously, mm. he recognized. Yes. The, the main thing here is recognition. He yeah. recognized that, no, this is not the voice of my father. Mm. My father cannot have said this. Mm. This is not my father talking. Mm. He didn't, no, you said he didn't rebuke Peter. Mm. As a person, mm. he rebuked set. He said, "Satan." He mm. he knew there was a spirit talking through Peter, mm. because at that time Peter probably have left little space in his heart, voided, mm. and Satan used the opportunity. Come on, just say this word. I mean, even if you look at it, even in our in our own personal lives. Mm. Sometimes we, you know, you got so many people going around saying that person is a hater, I don't care about me and all of that. But sometimes you just need to recognize when the wicked spirit or uh, this, uh, uh, an unfamiliar spirit has taken possession of someone. And this is what we talk about righteous anger. You mm. need to recognize the fact that that's not that person speaking. That's mm. the spirit that is speaking in that person. Because sometimes people come to our lives and they try to discourage us from the will of God for our lives. Yeah. It's twofold. There are some people that come with genuine concern. Because the will of God for our lives does not look so flamboyant. Yeah. It doesn't look like, oh my God, like this, are you sure about this? We've been in that situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many We've been times. in that situation yeah. where we're telling people what the will of God is for our lives. And we know that it is not that these people don't care about us. Yeah. Actually, it's out of concern. Yeah. That because saying, of love. Because of love, love. They're saying, are you sure? Have you thought about it carefully? Have you? And we realize that even in their questioning and their, and their speaking, it's almost discouraging. But... And there's an area in our heart where we know that they're not speaking with they're not speaking with the influence of the spirit of God. Yeah. They're speaking with the influence of not the spirit of God. And not the spirit is influencing them to, yeah. to speak that way because so, because the scripture says that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Yeah. But has given us a spirit of um um power of sound mind and of boldness. Yeah. So we recognize the people that come with us afraid. Mm. We're like, mm, that's not the spirit. The spirit of God does not yeah. does not make us afraid. We know that we are, we should be able to be bold enough to say that mm. if it's the will of God, then so be it. Yeah. So those that are afraid, we're like, what is what is um you know what is yeah. what is using you, and um we know there are people that we speak to about the will of God for our lives, and we know it's not so flamboyant. And they're like, if it's the will of God, then so be it. And you yeah. know that, yes. Yes, that is it. That is the spirit um, of God speaking through you. And there are some people that mm. recognize it and say, I've been hearing this as well. Mm. And I think you should do what God wants you to do. Mm. Rather than say, don't. Yeah. This is risky. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Who said, who called risky? Yeah, that's another subject. That is, you thing. know. But, another subject but the thing the is, the, the main thing is, we recognize the love that they have for yeah. us. Yeah, but we, but we are to then recognize mm. that no, this is not God talking this because God one talking. thing is there has to be something that needs to shake you when you are ready to do something. Yeah, it doesn't mean that that person is a devil or that mm. person uh, is Satan or is demon mm. or something. Yeah, but it's just at that point of time, mm. that person probably the thought that came upon them Resentful. is yeah. they allowed it to. No, yeah. this doesn't make sense. Yeah. They allow the thought to kind of like... So, so just like Peter. Mm. It doesn't make sense to Peter that how can you come on that? Yeah. So so what we're, what we're saying here yeah. is the fact that recognition and then pray. Mm. When Jesus said, get behind me, Satan, it was a prayer. Mm. It wasn't saying, ah, 
um, Peter, you've done. No, it mm-hmm. was a prayer. Get behind me, Satan. Yeah, and you can so, sense that even the way Jesus responded, you can tell. You can sense that it is a, it is a, um, it is a, an aggressive response. Yeah, he, he's not like I'm trying to be gentle. I'm, he's aggressive, and he and he was aggressive because he was addressing the spirit. Mm. He wasn't addressing the person, mm. and so, um, I would, I would, I would like to think, according to the way it was written, that Jesus responded to Peter directly. But even in our own personal lives, mm. even now, even if I, we don't respond um, directly to to the person that is probably speaking not of God, mm. we know that in our hearts how we are, um, how we are managing that truth. If it's necessary for my, for me to respond directly, then I will. If it isn't, then in my in my in my private time, yeah. I would address that issue mm. with God, you know, and with whatever, um, you know, spirit. Yeah. I want to, I want to linger because of uh, those words that may have been pronounced over me. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Because those um, words, those th- may, the, like the thing is, when we recognize things mm. that is not in line with God, uh, plan for us, mm. we need to take it to prayer. Mm. If we know that who who we're going to approach is going to take it somehow, we just take it back to prayer. Mm. Then we can talk about the issue later mm. on. Mm. But what in, in this case of Peter and Jesus, mm. these are two close mm. friends. Mm. You know, although Peter is a disciple, but I would still call, because Jesus said we are his yes, friend. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he, he spoke to him directly that, look, get behind me, Satan. Mm-hmm. So he's talking to himself that Satan, go away from me. Because if you remember this statement, if you remember this statement was also used in the time of uh, when Jesus got tempted. Okay. When he was tempted yeah. during the fasting, mm-hmm. he said, get behind me, Satan. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think this statement was used at that mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. When he said, um, I think that was the last temptation after the last one, the third mm-hmm. temp- temptation. So he just said, get be- Satan, get behind me. So he used the same thing again yeah. here. Yeah. So I-, I hope I'm not wrong, but I think this is the same statement that Jesus used. Yeah. 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 And I mean, like I said, there are many examples. We're not going to. We're not going to explore all the examples. Mm. I don't know if we should explore the next one or if we should actually just move on. So another example, another example in the book of Mark 3, 1 to 6. This is where um, Jesus was angry because the Pharisees, the Pharisees, I don't know if I should say the Pharisees. (laughs) The Pharisees' wickedness would rather that a man's hand remained withered than them assessing their heart in order to accept truth. Mm. So if you read it, it says, um, and he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm? So there was a man that came in um, with a withered hand that needed healing. Mm. And the Pharisees were saying, no, we can't heal on the Sabbath. Mm. It's on the Sabbath day, we can't heal on the Sabbath. And Jesus said, is it, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm? To save life or to kill. But they were silent. And he looked around. He looked around at them with anger. Grieved at their hardness of heart. Hmm. Grieved at their hardness Hard, of heart. That is the word. And said to them. And, and said to the man. Stretch out your arm. He stretched it out. And his hand was restored. Hmm. So you can see that, that example. That. Um, the concern of Christ was the fact that he even questioned them mm. because he wanted them to see what he was seeing. Yeah, He wanted them to understand what he was understanding. But these people's heart was so hardened. It is not that they, they, want, they, they weren't able to understand what Christ was trying to reveal to them. It's mm. that their heart was hardened to what Christ was trying to reveal to them. Mm. And that's what grieved the, that's what grieved Christ's yeah, heart. Yeah. He was more concerned about that than he was about the Sabbath mm. and the the keeping of the law. Mm. If that makes sense, I don't mm. know if you can shed more light into that yeah. scripture. But I th- yeah. yeah, for me, when I read that scripture before, and I was thinking, Jesus, when he spoke to them and said, um, "Is it more? Is it lawful on Sabbath day to do good 
or to do harm. Jesus was trying to wake their mind, open their heart, mm. make them reason that, look, this is your fellow mm. human being. Mm. This is your fellow brother. This is your fellow family. This mm. is your fellow friend. Mm. This is your fellow relative. Mm. This is your fellow body. <laughs> How painful would you just allow this man to mm. be suffering on this day yeah. that you call Sabbath? Yeah. And you are sitting down, able to be comfortable in your own seat yeah. and eating and having, enjoying yourself on that day. Mm. Is it not better for this man to be healed and join us in happiness? Yeah. But Jesus was trying to make them reason yeah. with this. So he questioned them. That question is just for them to wake up in their heart. Mm. Wow. Uh, hold on. This is true, you know. But no, instead, mm. their heart mm. was so stubborn, yeah. so stubborn, mm. and they couldn't see beyond that. I mean, it's interesting because um, this man that walked in had the withered hand, mm. and I think that's the reference that Christ is making, that is it lawful? What would you rather I do? Mm. Heal this man or let him walk away? Um, with the, yeah. the, the same injury and the harm, you rather he walks away unhealed, yeah, so that we can, we can, so that we can observe ourselves and see that we have kept the law, yeah, you know, and let this man walk away. So it is not that Christ is interesting because it's not that Christ was grieved for the man's withered hand, because I think with the man's withered hand he can heal that man, mm. whether near or far he can heal that man. The scripture says that he was grieved. At their hardness of heart, yeah. that is more. That is a pain for him Can because he knows see? that he knows that we, when it, with the human heart, mm. it is a is a matter of your will. God cannot um, interfere with your will. Yeah. So he's looking at their heart, thinking, even though they are being so hypocritical, mm. Christ still grieved on their behalf. Yeah. Because he thought your heart. Oh. And you are still my creation. God is so lovely because yeah. I mean And you're still my creation, so it's not that I it's not that I don't care for you. I am actually grieved that you can't see things the way that I would have desired you to have seen them. The words of Christ is the words there, it's, it's very interesting. Because I mean, you will be looking that this is what you should be doing, praying for this man yeah. on this day. Yeah. Because he walks in here expecting healing. Yeah. And you are trying to turn that healing down. What did he say? He said um, there's a part in the Bible in the book of Matthew where it says, yeah, yeah those, those who, who are, are well, well do not need, need a doctor, doctor yeah. but only those who are who sick, are sick yeah. who need a doctor. So mm. this man was sick on this day. Mm. And this day, he, he expects healing on that day because, in fact, that should be the day many Pharisees who called, or the priests should be able to even pray for him to mm. heal. Mm. So he, he even came in the form of, I'm going to get healed today yeah. because... At least we'll see a couple of yeah. prophets there. Mm. And if we look at nowadays, if we have priests or pastors that we have nowadays or, or ministers who have made certain laws in the church or uh, doctrine, mm. this kind of doctrine, and you were moved, mm. you were moved in the spirit, you had the spirit of transformation that, that, that changed your heart and you are now filled with the power of Holy Spirit and the and the Lord was speaking to you that you need to heal that man. I believe nowadays that the, the way we are, many people will be worried and be scared to do that healing because they'll be like, who am I to disobey those leaders? Yeah. Mm. They'll be like, who am I to disobey those leaders? Yeah. Who am I to speak against whether we call them G-O yeah. or... Uh, mm. pastor or prophet mm. you know people will be worried that ah I, well although my heart is telling me to to do this but the, if these leaders are saying i shouldn't yeah but jesus did not see he saw the pain in his heart and yeah. said no yeah. he was angry that no yeah. how can you left left this kind of person yeah you know and, you see, and you i think that's that, very he wasn't he wasn't Christ was not trying to be discreet about it. He wasn't trying. He was boldly saying, and he says, and and he said to the man, stretch out your arm, and he stretched it out, and his hand was was restored. Mm. So Christ made it evidently clear that no, I am not going to allow your 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 principles or your expectations to override 
mm. mercy and grace and love over here. Yeah. He didn't he didn't let that happen. And so I'm just saying I'm speaking mm. in um with reference to what you've made mention of as well. In our obedience to God, mm. sometimes it's gonna look those people that are on the outside that are um doctrine followers, you know, that are um, res- um pastor respecters, um geo respecters and all of that. Sometimes when you're obeying God to them, it comes across as though you're being you're disrespectful, disrespectful. Yeah. You know, but who who who's um who's um um response matters to you more? Mm. Is it God's? Is it are you trying to please God or are you trying to please man? Mm. Because if your key focus is pleasing God, let it be that you think yeah. that I'm dis- disrespectful, but let me please the Lord yeah. that ultimately it is Him that I'm answering to. So if we find ourselves in a position where it feels like should I follow, we should never we should never compromise the will of God mm. and the word of God in order for us to follow doctrine. Yeah, there's should, nothing wrong in it. It should never be the case for um us to even reason it reason it that way. And I want to make something clear that sometimes when we are obeying God, a large amount of the times it will come across to people. Oh, there's labels. There's yeah. labels attached. There's so many. They wanted to label Christ. Yeah, yeah. They were looking for a yeah, reason. Th- yeah. They were looking for a reason to mm, label him. Mm. They were actually searching for a reason. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But he didn't. He didn't give into that. He yeah. still did what was right. Yeah. There's nothing wrong in respecting um these these leaders, of but course. when it comes to whether God is telling you to, mm. and you know that it's God that's speaking, mm. would you rather? disobey God mm. or disobey man because don't forget this is what Saul in the Bible did before David became a king mm. he disobeyed God to obey man mm. and the kingdom was taken away from him yeah. so and yeah. yeah so this is these are like brief examples where uh, we've observed that um, Christ um, exercised righteous anger, righteous anger. he exercised mm. his anger righteously his yeah. anger did not lead him to sin mm. um he was just grieved um because of anger um so yeah so we're gonna i think we'll summarize there for today yeah because in the next video mm. we are going to we haven't really looked at the key scripture mm. which we plan to do in the next video the key scripture we would take that scripture which is john 2 13 to 21 yeah. and we would assess it verse by verse mm. verse by verse and this scripture is really important because um from our own observation and mm. our own um, understanding, we have noticed that there's actually a lot of Christians that use the scripture to justify unrighteous anger. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of actually justifying righteous, um, using it, instead of actually seeing that this is what right, that this is the, the, the display of righteous anger, mm. what tends to happen is that people use that to justify yeah. unrighteous anger. And that's the reason why we've actually used it as a key scripture. Yeah. Because it kind of like coins the two perfectly. We've mm. looked at righteous anger, mm. examples of it. But that that kind of like I feel like um you can see where there's that um conflict yeah. conflict yeah. between righteous and unrighteous anger. Yeah. So yeah, we just um we will stop there for today mm. and then um we would uh continue in the next yeah. video. Thank um, you very much for listening. Is there anything thank you. you. And on our next video we will actually be discussing in depth about the entities that's coming into our world mm. to cost to cause something strategy mm. to cause a massive event that will be beyond our expectation yeah. so we are we're going to discuss about that and why our anger should be righteous mm. anger why we should exercise a right righteous anger mm. so that is what we need to get into depth into those uh, uh um words and in depth in this in this message in this mm. topic that we're dealing with now mm. so we're looking forward to see you on this channel again and to be able to to hear what we have to say mm. on, on on this next and we'll discuss about what it takes to exercise all this righteous anger and you know we see you god bless you Okay. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Because you say where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there. And you have given us this topic about righteous anger. And we have delivered it because we once a victim to this spirit of anger that leads to sin. So you have transformed our heart that we may have 
the Spirit, your Holy Spirit, that will help us to be able to uh, to, to, to be able to exercise righteous anger that will not lead to sin. We thank you and we pray for the heart of those who are listening, oh God, who are suffering from spirit of anger that leads to sin, oh God. We pray that you will fill them up with your spirit, oh God, the spirit that will help them to exercise righteous anger in the name of Jesus. Amen. The spirit that will help them to see what you have made them for, not what they've made themselves for in the name of Jesus. Amen. The spirit that will make them to be able to rebuke anger spirit from other people or rebuke Satan from other people rather than fighting other people in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will give them the power to be able to exercise the authority to overcome all this uh, uh, anger spirit and demonic spirit that is moving around in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that you will guide our hearts and protect us and help us to continue to, 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 to learn your word and to be able to, to grow in you every time, every day in Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for listening again. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you get the notifications. Click the notification bell so that you get the notifications of these videos as they are released. Please like our um, videos. It does help. Share it with someone. Bless someone else. Leave a comment if you have a question. You know, if you have an addition or anything you want to say, feel free to leave a comment down below and we would respond if if it's if need be and if or if it's necessary thank you very much for listening we hope you have a wonderful day and may the peace of the lord remain with you now and always